Continuing on our look at free agency in the NFL, Trey Wingo here with Hall of Famer Bill Parcells and six-time NFL Executive of the Year, Bill Polian. Let's go rapid fire here. Go through some of these names out here, and we'll get your guys' thoughts right off the top of your head in terms of a coach and a general manager looking at these players in free agency. The best available free agent. I'm taking linebacker, Connor Barwin. Love him if you're a 3-4 guy. Fits in, put him in there, let him play. He can rush the quarterback. Plus some of the best hair in football. He goes after the Kramer mode from Seinfeld, so that's always a plus. What about you, top of the line? I'm going on the offensive line for two reasons. Number one, they're the best value. They play the longest, and this guy is the most complete guard that's out there on the market, Andy Levitre from the Buffalo Bills. He can pass protect. He's 305 pounds. He can, he's got great movement. And he's good enough for run blocker. Right, we've started off with a linebacker and an offensive lineman. Your next best available out there. Well, I think I would, if I could find out enough about this guy's injury that he had, Lewis Delmas, the safety from Detroit, he was a very, very good player. I'd have to investigate that injury just a little bit. I would try to do that. And if, if it was to my satisfaction, he's somebody I would consider very strong. When he's been on the field, he's played very well for the Detroit Lions. Another best available for you. Back to the offensive line. I'm going to go Sebastian Vollmer now. He has a back issue, which you'd have to investigate uh, pretty thoroughly. But he's a very good pass-protecting left tackle for the New England Patriots. It's interesting that in this pass-happy era we are in football, and there's some big-name wide receivers, you guys stayed away from the wide receivers. Well, we're looking for value. Yeah. Well, two of the top wide receivers are slots. Right. Okay. Now, you say, that, see that term wide receiver, it's misused. Jennings is a wide receiver. Wallace is a wide receiver. But Welker and Amendola are both slots. Slot guys. So, yeah. you know, depending right. on your system, how many plays are they playing? I don't know. All right, let's move on to guys that maybe you guys know a little bit more about, but your average football fan doesn't know it. These guys... Uh, maybe a signing you'll see in the in the box score on, on your team's website and say, well, what is that all about? But you think these guys could really be big players. Let's start with you here. Captain Munnerlyn. One of the best names in football. <laughs> he was a collegiate free agent out of South Carolina. He is an excellent, excellent nickelback, and they're hard to come by. Nickelbacks have to have special qualities. They have to be tough enough to play inside and good enough cover guys to cover wide receivers. He can do that. Great short area quickness and a lot of anticipation, good ball skills, and he's a good return guy. Yeah, we've seen him do some things in the return game with the Carolina Panthers. What about you? Well, you know, I'm a linebacker guy. Yes, you are. So I'm this time I'm going to go for Brinkley. I scouted him pretty closely in college, and I know he can play that 3-4 inside linebacker. And uh, he's a big raw bone guy, 245-pound guy. He can come downhill on you. I like him. Yeah, Leslie Frazier likes him, too, in Minnesota. We'll see if that relationship can stay. Give me another hidden gem. Well, my other hidden gem is not so hidden because he had a great playoff. Delaney Walker, the uh, tight end slash fullback with the, uh, with the San Francisco 49ers. He's a very versatile guy. He can play in the slot. He can play tight end, and he's a tough enough guy to be able to block. And he can play fullback. Yeah, everybody talks about the Jacoby Jones return in the Super Bowl, but Delaney Walker laid him out a couple of times on kickoffs as well. He had an impact outside of that one play, obviously, uh, on kickoffs at the Super Bowl. Another hidden gem for you. Well, this one's got a few red flags, but it's hard to find big people defensively. Interior, defensive lineman, played very well as a rookie for the Jacksonville Jaguars. His name is Terrence Knighton. What? Dre, I would definitely have to have a weight clause in his contract yeah. that was substantial because he can he can gravitate upward very quickly. Big player might not be the right word to describe Terrence Knight. Pork he, chop he is, is he, he is a colossus. <laughs> and the funny thing is you've seen him in a couple of plays really move athletically oh, with yeah. that big body. He's a good athlete. He certainly is, but you're right. There are some things that uh, need to be straightened out there. Okay, so let's, let's go now to some of these bigger name free agents that have been productive for their teams, but they may be going on somewhere else. And let's talk about that situation. If not here, then where for some of these guys? And let's start with Mike Wallace. Look, obviously they didn't give him the big contract two years in a row. Uh, they paid one of the other receivers uh, while he was trying to get the big deal. So if not Pittsburgh, Mike Wallace, best fit. Where is it? I think he's the best guy out there for the, for the simple reason that he can take the top off a of defense. Now, he's a little bit small, but he can fly. And anybody that's looking for a wide receiver with speed would be well served to look at him. Miami is the obvious because they have a 
crying need at wide receiver and a big need for speed. Now, they may go for Jennings. They know more about him than most any, everybody. But I, he's, he's going to get a lot of action. All right, you mentioned Greg Jennings and the familiarity there with the head coach of the, of the uh, Dolphins, Joe Philbin, used to be his OC in Green Bay. What about Greg Jennings? If not Green Bay, where for him? Very good player, but Green Bay got by and replaced them rather quickly. I would be a little concerned that I could get the same Greg Jennings that he once was. With a couple of injuries already in the uh, I'd be concerned. All right, let's move on to Wes Welker, who moved on from Miami to New England. It's hard to imagine him not as a Patriot right now with the success he and Tom Brady have had, but it's been contentious over the last couple of years. If not New England, where for Wes Welker? Well, Indianapolis is a place. You know, they're losing Austin Collie, or very well may lose him, and he's got injury issues. Arizona. But uh, I don't know if they've got the quarterback to make the expenditure worthwhile. Larry he's Fitzgerald gonna might to, agree with you. Yeah, he's yeah. going to have to go to someone who has a quarterback that can really make use of him. So that narrows the field uh, somewhat. All right, what about O.C. Uminiora? Uh, it's, it's been an ongoing soap opera the last few years with him trying to get the contract situation done. If not the Giants, where? I think maybe Atlanta, John Abraham. Uh, I think O.C. would be one of those special veteran players that Bill talked about. He's not a full-time player. He isn't going to play the run uh, a thousand plays a year for you on defense. But just let him do what he can do, which is rush the, rush the passer in those situations. I think Atlanta's a place that's going to need something. Well, listen, Abraham had 10 of their 29 sacks last year. They clearly need to upgrade their pass rush. Okay, buyer beware. Give me the name of one person out there that you think you've got to be really careful with here, Bill. Dwight Freeney. Yeah. He is a special veteran who can help, <clears throat> but he's had a series of injuries over time. Not serious, but enough to make you uh, wonder whether or not you can get a solid year-long performance uh, out of it. This is not a guy who's big to begin with. He's, he's on the smaller side, uses speech, so his injuries pile up, and then it becomes more of a question. Same thing for you, buyer beware player. Well, this player, be his third team, his name is Reggie Bush. Be his third team. That means two teams had him, and it just didn't quite work the way they envisioned that it would. And uh, I don't think he's a lead runner. He's a utility player. He's a marquee player. I, I think he has versatility, but I just be a little careful. For the money he'll probably want. Right. Because he's used to getting it. It's a learned behavior. I'd be a little careful. Well, he became more of an inside, inside the tackles runner in Miami, but also got hurt this last year trying to do that. So we'll see what happens. Lots more coming. Stay with us here on this free agency preview.